welcome back to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, I interview small business owners from around the world. Now with me today is Reed Sandridge. He is the owner of Second Story Cards. Now this is a really enlightening episode uh, during which Reed really dives in and shares the origin story of the business and why he chose to focus on homelessness uh, specifically. I really love Reed's ability to tell the story behind what he does and not just dive into the logistics. He has a really nice balance of describing both the story and the business side of things. I think you'll really enjoy this episode um, and be sure to check out Reed and Second Story Cards. I linked their Instagram in the description of this episode. Reed was also very kind to give our listeners and the audience 15% off off of their cards through the end of May. So that's 15% off if you use the code virtualcoffee15. So that's virtualcoffee15 for 15% off through the end of May 2024. Thank you so much, Reed. We really appreciate that. Uh, now, before we hear from Reed, of course, as always, Please take the time to rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcast app and on Spotify. It just helps others discover the small businesses that we feature and give support to them. You can also find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all the social medias. It's all at Virtual Coffee Podcast. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And now let's get into it. Let's hear from Reed. Welcome, Reed. Thank you so much for being on Virtual Coffee. Well, thanks for having me, Alexa. I am looking forward to this conversation. So let's jump in. I'd love for you to maybe give a little bit of introduction to yourself, to our audience, and just start getting us familiar with Second Story Cards' mission. Who is the business? Who who are you and who is the business? So my name is Reed Sandridge. And I am the founder and CEO of Second Story Cards. And we're a boutique uh, social enterprise that helps the creative talents. We elevate the creative talents uh, and voices of people who have experienced homelessness. And so a fundamental core, there's a belief that we share that there's like no one element in our lives, certainly not our housing status, Mm. that defines us uh, entirely. And regardless of our circumstances, that we have the ability to change our situation, to change the narrative that often wrongly defines us. You know, we can write that second story. And that's where the the name second story cards comes from is it's an odd thing that happens to people when they become homeless is that moniker is really tough to shed. doesn't matter if you were an attorney beforehand or a successful artist or what, you know, whatever you become homeless for the majority of people in society. That's, that's who you are. You're a singular lens for them. And that we just feel that's wrong. So, you know, what we do is uh, I've been an entrepreneur for many years. I realized that people who have been homeless share a lot of the same tenets that are at the core of, of entrepreneurship and people who've been homeless are creative. They're resilient. They are scrappy. They, you know, (laughs) they they get up and fight the same fight every day, regardless of people telling them no. And so I thought, well, how do we take those same tenets and provide people who've been homeless this framework in order for them to create consumer products together and give them a direct revenue um, from the sales so that they can get back on their feet and into housing? So I'll stop there. That's kind of, that's us in a nutshell. I'm interested in why homelessness, like why focus on, on that initiative or, or area over maybe others? Was it, you know, a personal story you had, or was it just something that, you know, you decided you wanted to help tackle? Great question. And I'm going to add a question you didn't ask to it. Mm. So I think there's two fundamental, interesting kind of questions of, of why, um, you know, why homelessness and why greeting cards, which is what we started mm-hmm. with, like what, you know, why, <laughs> a 
I'll start with the why homelessness first. And it shows me in the sense mm -hmm. uh, I, I have not been homeless. Every collaborator that we work with to make our cards, all of our makers, they have experienced homelessness. Mm -hmm. And I was doing a crazy project. We could do a whole podcast on it <laughs> called Year of Giving. And basically, I had lost my job. Uh, this was maybe 15 years ago. And I had this crazy idea to start on the anniversary of my mother's death and to go out and give strangers $10, no strings attached, and just kind of see what they would say they would do with it. And from that journey, I met someone on the 67th day. His wow. name was Anthony Crawford. And Anthony and I, I met him in 2010. We developed a friendship. Uh, we would meet pretty much bi-weekly at the same coffee shop. And, you know, he just, he was such an interesting, creative, funny um, person that we just developed a friendship. And I thought he doesn't have a lot of friends um, that aren't in his same situation, if that makes sense. He knew a lot of people because he was on the streets, but people who would regularly meet with him that cared about him, that, you know, were willing to help him find housing. There was, you know, that's asking a lot of someone. And I just said, why can't I be that person for him? I, I would do it for someone, another friend of mine, right? Someone came to me and said, look, I've lost my housing. I said, I, I would do that. So we started to meet in 2013. I helped him get the keys to his first apartment in about 20 years. Wow. And then I thought there's got to be a way that help Anthony make money especially since he was facing some disability and he had a partner at home that he was the 100% caretaker for. And so I thought, you know, he's funny. How hard could it be to make these greeting cards, right? <laughs> and we'll make some greeting cards and sell them and, you know, we'll help Anthony have stability in his life. There were a lot of assumptions that I just shared that were wrong. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the why greeting cards part that I said I would kind of answer. Mm -hmm. um, one, I thought it'd be super easy. Two, my mother was a huge greeting card fan growing uh -huh. up. I lost years of my life, Alexa, in greeting card stores <laughs> while she looked for the perfect card for Aunt Patty's birthday that was nine, <laughs> nine months away. Yeah, and so, yeah. um, and then I, I started looking in my own childhood like things that, you know, keepsakes. And I made tons of gre homemade greeting cards. And I, you know, I named, I had like a company name for them. And, and oh, wow. I really yeah. felt like it also kind of, as I said, homelessness found me, the greeting cards kind of found me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy we, we went down that path because that, that is such a, a beautiful story. Like one of the reasons I love having these types of conversations is just to highlight how how things come together, right? And now look look where you're at with the scale of the business and everyone you're helping. And we'll get into that. But I love the origin stories and everyone has a different one. And I just love how you kind of unintentionally mixed with some intention stumbled upon upon this path and look where it's what it's blossomed into. So thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's a beautiful story. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about greeting cards you know, why do we give someone a card, right? We give them a card, we give someone a card to tell them that they're seen, to mm -hmm. tell them that we love them, to tell them that we care for them during difficult moments. We, we give someone a card maybe to make them happier, to make them laugh, to make them feel appreciated, right? And those are all core feelings that we're trying to establish with the community that we're helping, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in an interesting way, someone who goes and buys our card at a shop and gives it to a friend or a loved one, they're kind of replicating the same experience that our community is so thirsty for. They're mm -hmm. thirsty for someone to reach out to them and tell them that they care, to be seen, to feel loved, to feel appreciated. And if someone can buy our card and laugh or feel loved, you know, all those emotions I just shared. And then on the back of our card where it's, it shares the story of the maker. If they realize that that person 
is someone who's experienced homelessness and yet they were moved by by their creativity maybe we help shorten that gap that is yeah. perceived the difference you know if people walk around if you see someone homeless often you know i I've, i'm guilty of the same you think that could never happen to me and so this is a person you see and you almost put them in another category this is yeah. this is not someone i don't have friends in my circle who are homeless i don't have mm -hmm. you know people might think that right and so if you laugh at the same jokes if you cry at the same um narrative if you you know feel inspired by the same things well maybe we're not as different as hmm. we think yeah it creates that connection between yeah just two people and i like how it helps folks who are not homeless help give back and help those people who who need that little boost right back to get you know just to help them get get back on track or achieve the goals that they want to achieve because i think sometimes folks again who are not in a homeless position i have even experienced it like well how can i help right like i don't i don't know how to help and so the easy way is just to maybe ignore the problem and just not help right and that that's not not the right thing to do but i like how you're helping folks you're giving them an easy, quote unquote, easy way to help. I just like, again, you're connecting those two people together in a way that that that's mu mutually beneficial, right? It helps someone give and it helps someone take in a really respectful and beautiful way. How does the business work in the sense of how do you get, get connected with the makers of the cards? Um, what's that process like? And then, you know, mm -hmm. vice versa, how is the proceeds or the money given back to the makers? Like how, how does that work out? Great question. So um, I wish I could tell you that there was, it was really hard to find people hmm. to work with, but the sad reality is we have uh, an epidemic of homelessness yeah. in this country and it is not difficult to find people that we can work with. And it usually starts just like you and I right now over a virtual coffee. And let me tell you, I have a cup of coffee right here that I'm having with you. <laughs> um, but it generally starts in that manner. Okay. You know, someone might ask for help in the form of, do you have a dollar or $5 today, right? While I'm happy to help them in that moment, I often tell them, if you're open to a possible way to help you long-term, then let's do it. Let's sit down and have yeah. a cup of coffee and see and see where it goes. And if at the end of that you say, Reed, this isn't for me, mm -hmm. that's fine. We've had a cup of coffee. Maybe we've developed a friendship. It's uh, often someone within the areas that I travel, you know, so it's someone who I, I'm likely to see again. And so if yeah. nothing else, I've now, you know, broadened my community, broadened my, you know, my, my net of people that I know and perhaps I can help them in another way. I'm based in Washington, DC. Most of our makers are here. We have about a half dozen that are in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, wow. And we have had a few others throughout the country. A sad reality, given the population we work with, is that life expectancy is much lower than the general population for, for the people that we work with. And we've had four of our card makers now pass away. Oh, and so, wow. for example, we were working with a lovely, talented woman in San Diego, but she passed away. We were working with someone in Ohio and due to, uh, there's a lot going on with the people we work with. Mental illness often um, is a factor, emotional needs, direct housing and job need, you know, things that come up in life, right? Um, so we're no longer working with that person in, in Ohio, unfortunately. Okay. And, um, but we're kind of, we've got this little focus on Nashville and Washington, DC, but we'd love to work with, if, you know, if someone listening out there maybe has a relationship with someone that they know is either currently or formerly homeless, we'd love to work. If, they, if you think they'd be a great person to work with, we'd love to find a way to work with them. So the, the second part of your question is how does it work, right? That's, right. I think a lot of people, you know, they're just like, so how does this really work? How are you helping people? When I started the, the organization, I thought we need a very simple model. 
and it has to work for them from day one, right? It can't be yeah. something where they have to either invest money in or a lot of time. So from day one, our card makers get paid whether they're generating revenue or not. Yeah. And we have a special fund that we've set up actually when we're talking about the origins of second story cards, Anthony Crawford, that gentleman I met on day mm -hmm. 67, he, he passed away as well. And when he passed away, we created the Crawford fund, which is a fund that when we sell his cards still, the portion that he would have received, we put into a fund for our new card makers so that they can start receiving some, some revenue right away. The model is that for Every time we sell one of our, our greeting cards or the products, they get 15% of the sales price. And we then donate 5% to any organization that they choose. If we sell something at wholesale, we get generally like half the price we would get if we sell it direct, for example. Whatever the price we get, they get 15% of that. Okay. We don't take out yep. anything for marketing or for, oh, I had to ship this. So I had to take out shipping or you know anything like that. It needed to be a very simple, straightforward model for them. The 5% that we donate to charity, we used to give 10% and to kind of help our business survive, we've lowered that to 5%. And I've been amazed at how much our makers value that because many of them have forever been on the receiving end of help, right? Yeah. People are always helping them and they're wanting to find ways to help others. So the ability to give back is very liberating, I think, for them. So they feel like, you know, I'm also helping. I'm also giving right. back to the same organizations that have helped me get to where I am. So it's kind of an interesting full cycle that it takes. Thank you for describing that. And to your piece of um, how they want to give back too, I also wonder... Do you think it helps? Because sometimes it can be really hard to accept help, right? So do you think for some folks, for some of your makers, does it help with the mindset of, well, I can accept help and I'm giving back help? Like, do you think it just makes it a bit easier for some some of the makers? Absolutely, Alexa. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I don't think that the subpopulation that I'm working with mm -hmm. is all that different from the greater population of people who've experienced homelessness out there. Mm -hmm. And what I have found is these individuals are deeply caring. They'll, they would do almost anything for you. I've watched people that we work with who have, who I know have no money give, you know, if they had $20 to their name, I've seen them give the, give half of that away to someone else. And, and I've asked like, you don't, you're not really in a position to do that. I mean, right. tell them. And I remember once being told, this person, this other person needs it more than I do today. And you, I think, you know, ask, ask yourself honestly, right? Like, would I do that? Would I give half right. of the money yeah. I have, my, my net worth, would I give it to someone else who just needed it more that day? Mm -hmm. I don't think many people would do that, no. but it's interesting. It reminds me of a quote from Madonna. <laughs> Gosh, if you asked me before our conversation, if Madonna's name would come up, I think <laughs> I, the answer would have been no, but there was some, <laughs> She was being interviewed once and someone said, gosh, you, back in the 80s, you were so bold. You took so many risks. And, and they, they, were, they said, I'm so in awe of that courage you had. And I loved her response. She, and I'm, I'm not doing it justice, but she said something like, when you have nothing, you're not, <laughs> it's not courageous to, to like hmm. take all the chances I took. I didn't have anything. I was at rock bottom. I wasn't risking anything. <laughs> She's like, T if I would make those choices today, that would be risky. Cause now I'm, yeah. now I have assets and I, I have all kinds of things, you know, t uh, material goods that I didn't have. So interesting. And I yeah. think that maybe is somewhat similar to someone who's currently homeless. That is an interesting quote, because I think to what you're describing of, you know, here I am sitting in my home with all these things surrounded by me. And to your point, oh, Alexa, would you give up half your income to I'd be like, wait, what? Like, I don't think so. Let me do the calculate. Like your brain just starts racing because you have all these yeah. like things to quote unquote protect. But now I'm I'm thinking if I had none of this to your point. If you don't have those 
these things to protect or keep or whatever that go- is going on in our brains when we're surrounded by all these things. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. That, that's so, I don't know. It's just sending my brain through a, an interesting thought process. I, I think that's really enlightening. Yeah. And just something we don't think about, right. Sitting in our, in our homes and just going about our day to days. We don't, we don't think about that if we were in a different position, what that would be like. No, we should. We have, like I said, we have an epidemic of people yeah. who do not have a basic need. And it's a small gesture from from most of us could really mean a lot. And yeah, it's funny because we look sure. homelessness is often, you know, I started earlier on talking a little bit about, you know, how there is this perceived differ, difference between someone who's maybe successful in their work and housed and mm. and then someone who's perhaps on the street. And honestly, homelessness is shouldn't be a reflection of a person's worth, but it yeah. really should be a reflection of our society's collective failure to provide a basic human need to society, to, to the people mm-hmm. that we live with. And we're failing at that. And I think there's an interesting place for social enterprises. My, my friend Robert Egger, um, who's an amazing entrepreneur and social activist in his own right he talks about that social entrepreneurism is economic buddhism and it's hmm. and it kind of it kind of you know st- stretches the the gap between the public what the public sector can offer and what the private sector can offer and so we play that interesting role there where we are a second story cards is a for-profit business with a socially focused mission and I think we can do we can do a lot of good while still being while still providing you know an organization that such as ours that is a, a for-profit company. We just happen to value different outcomes in addition to just the financial bottom line. That's a great point because I think a lot of times we think, oh well, that business, their business, they need to make money. So like that's their focus. They can't do anything good. Like they can't, you know, why would they, they donate or give back their business, but you're proof that you can, you can dabble in both. You can have both. You can meet in the middle and make both work. You can be a business while staying true to your mission and giving back to your community. That's why I really like your story, the background of the business. And, um, I'm glad you dove into that model that you use. Cause it just shows you can, you can be both. You can find that middle. Um, I think that's really important for people to to hear. People, it's it, what's interesting is when I meet other small business owners and entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. there's there's a point where they say, well, you you have an advantage though. <laughs> and that is people love you and they love your, I mean, not me, but they love the they love second story cards because of our mission. And it's funny that people always say that because my response is always the same. You could do it too. Yeah. What yeah. do you care about? Do, you, do right. you care about cancer uh, survivorship? Do you care about criminal justice reform? Do you care about LGBTQ rights? What What do you care about? And find a way to support that work. Find a way to... Uh, elevate the voices of those communities within your work, you can do that. And to this day, I don't really know anyone who has done it in a, I don't want to say that no one's done it in a meaningful way, but no one's done it in a way that basically defines their business. I mean, it, it defines who we are. So it's, it's sure, it makes us stand out. But the irony is that that benefit that we that we enjoy is free and available for everyone. And maybe yeah. it's not free. It costs us, you know, when I talk to business coaches and mentors, the first thing they do when they look at our model and say, they, they almost all say, that's a tough business model. You mm-hmm. are giving 20 cents of the dollar that comes in before you take out any expenses. You're giving that away in a business where margins are thin that's a tough, that's a tough model. And they're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, we're, I'm, I'm not like a multimillionaire, but you know, <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, struggling 
business owner, if I'm honest. You know, we we've been around for now seven years, but you know, we're not. I I, I wouldn't say by any means that we have made it. We're still growing. I, I have another job that I do in addition to this, so it's it's not easy, but it's worth it. It is interesting that people say that's that's an advantage. That's funny because to your point, yeah, they can do it too. And I think it's interesting because people can do it at different levels, right? How, um, for your business to your point, it really defines the business, right? It's the heart of the business, but other businesses could simply, you know, I donate 5% to XYZ organization that I'm passionate about and it's a line in their bio and that's the extent they go. I think that's perfect. I think that makes an impact too, right? It's just, yeah, that's interesting that they say it's an advantage because I, like I said, there's, I feel like there's different levels folks can engage in giving back um, in the sense of making it the entire business's identity versus maybe it's something that, that you do because you're passionate about it personally. Yeah. And while it's, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And while, it's an, <laughs> while it's an advantage, as we've said, mm-hmm. said, what I think people also maybe don't see is that our creative process to come up with products and designs and whatnot is very different than a normal business, right. uh, your average business, because we work collaboratively with our makers and they're not secretly past greeting card designers <laughs> or yeah. th- that's not like, it's not like that's the only people we find we reach right, and right. work with. Um, so we have to go through a creative process and the individuals we're working with are dealing with housing instability, mental illness, addiction, all kinds of challenges. Right. And so like, I, I love to tell the story that I'd gotten very far down the road with a, a, a new product we were launching and it was ready to go to production. And I just wanted to like run it by our maker you know, just a last check, everything looked good to you. And they said, this is a stupid idea. Who, whose idea is this? And Mm -hmm. I was like, this is your idea. (laughs) Why don't you like it now? And they said, I don't think this is my idea. I, I don't think that's very funny at all. And they were really struggling with their mental health at the time. While two weeks prior to that, we had a, you know, we were totally on the same page just in two weeks they were struggling so severely with their mental health that they yeah. could not even recognize that this was the fruit of their labor for the last month or so. Do you know what I mean? In a normal creative process, you wouldn't have that little off ramp, that side, you know, experience that that we do, the time that we have to spend, um, not just building products, but understanding where people are in in their own situations. So it doesn't come free, that special category that we enjoy of being a mission-driven social enterprise. It's not without cost, for sure. Mm -hmm. Direct, you know, dollars as well as time. I'm not a social worker by by background by any means, and I've had to learn a lot about trying to work with people who are struggling with the world's problems. Like you said, time, cost, energy, health. I, I'm happy you're diving into this because it's definitely more complex than it seems when you first just describe the business, right? And I, and I wanted to dive into that piece of how you collaborate with the makers. Can you tell us a bit more about that? What is that like? Um, do you guys meet in a coffee shop and someone helps design it on an iPad? Like what what is that process like of actually designing the card that you sell? So the process from from start to finish is super cool. And it starts with often that cup of coffee that we talked about. Um, okay. Now we have an office. So when I started, I was working out of my living room and we, hmm. we would meet at coffee shops. Generally now we meet at my office or if someone is not in the DC area, we meet remotely uh, like okay. on a Zoom. And what I learned through this business is that if you ask someone to try to develop a Father's Day card or a thank you card or wedding congratulations card, you have already like curtailed their creativity 
because mm-hmm. what we naturally do is we think of all the examples that we've seen in our life. And that's kind of what we come, we come up with another, we just regurgitate that and, and give you something we've already seen before. And the market isn't interested in that. You know, stores don't want to buy a product that they've seen a thousand times. It just, you know, a different flavor of it. It's not of interest. They already have that on their shelves. So what we discovered is we, we talk, we sit down and it's almost like therapy. We talk about people's lives. We talk about, you know, what do they, what makes them happy? What makes them cry? We talk about memories of birthdays. You know, do they like getting together at the holidays? What were holidays like when they were children? What do people think about love and marriage and divorce and getting pooped on by a bird? I mean, all kinds of just life experiences. We have a card about getting pooped on by a bird. Um, <laughs> and so it comes out of those conversations. We get these topics. That's when we introduce a graphic design team that then will take that idea and narrative and bring it to life. And then there is this kind of three-legged stool, as I like to say. Like it's a, the process has three different voices in it. There is the maker's voice, you know, trying to stay true to their ideas and their their content. There is the graphic designer and their creative process and their creative agency that they that they share. And then there is my hat that I wear, which is a I'm I'm going to financially support this project, mm-hmm. and so it has to be something that I believe is commercially viable, and so. It's a bit of a dance to bring that product all the way to, to the finish line because we've got to make sure all of us are happy, right? Um, I remember this this gentleman, Anthony, that I shared with you. <laughs> he had this card that he, oh, he used to tell me all the time what a great card it would be. And <laughs> it was this card that ha- said, I love dogs. And it had dog bones all over it, except for like maybe like 30 different 30 identical dog bones. And then it had a hot dog on it as well. You know, Anthony was like, I love dogs. I also love hot dogs. Um, (laughs) And so, but the problem, there were so many problems with that card, Alexa. It, it doesn't usually successful cards. You have to be able to answer three questions. Hmm. Who buys the card for what occasion for whom? Who buys the card for what occasion and for whom? You often do not buy a card to give to someone else that tells them that you like dogs. Hmm. You don't buy a card for someone else to tell them that you like sushi. It just, it didn't fit the model. And we, this was very early on. We didn't realize that, but he loved, he wanted to do it. You know, so I took the financial risk <laughs> on it. We made the card. I yeah. think we sold, three, we sold like three of them. I've got plenty. If you or any of your listeners want them, I won't even yeah, charge. Yeah. Let me know. I will send you it. I love I love dogs card. I love um, it. That's amazing though. <laughs> yeah. But it's that creative process is is really yeah. It's um it's emotional. It can be it can be difficult. It can be, you know, because I think in my role, I have to let go of the personal connection to an idea or to a thought. So it might start out something like really funny. But at some point I realize this just isn't going to commercially be viable and I have right. to shut it down. And, that, and then everyone, we're all disappointed, right? So it's, it's tough. And it's tough when we make a card that then doesn't sell. And, you know, then um, not only is that financially tough for the business, but it's disappointing to our makers. You know, they come to us to start with because of the money, the revenue share. But I guarantee you, it soon becomes much more than that. It's about rebuilding self-worth. It's about seeing their products in stores. There is nothing, if you want a dose of dopamine, Alexa, uh, where, where are you physically at? I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh. Okay. Yep. Um, we've got, we our, our cards are in some stores in Durham, but I, we're not in oh, Raleigh, okay. Raleigh proper, I don't think. Uh, sure. Just down the road. And yeah. if I could bottle something and sell it and change the world, it would be to bottle the experience of going with one of our card makers and being with them mm. when they see their cards being sold at a store for the first time. Mm-hmm. There is nothing. I mean, you see hardened 50-year-old men who spent half their life in prison 
break down and cry. <laughs> yeah. And and take it to everyone in the store and tell them, this is my card. I made this. And they turn it over and, you know, has their name on it. And they tell them, <laughs> my name is, is, is Eric. This is my card. Or, you know, oh, it gets me every time. It's... Yeah. It's, it's yeah, so worth no. it, right? I mean, all the hard days, the long mm-hmm. hours, doing all the, all the back-end work to make a business run, all those things that drive us crazy, those little moments, it's like having a, a child smile at you. You know, I have a <laughs> one-year-old and, mm-hmm. and he can keep me up all night and he can poop all over the place. <laughs> and if he gives me a big smile and a hug in the morning, all of that goes away. And it's the right. same when when you see a card maker feeling confident, defining themselves differently. Once I was at a Starbucks with um, one of our makers and he lived in the Starbucks pretty much when it, from when it opened to when it closed, you know, in Washington, our summers are hot, our winters are cold. So, you know, people try to find someplace to escape the elements. And when we made his first card, he ran down and told the whole barista team that he was he was now a card maker. Mm. And I realized in that moment that he had changed, he, he had changed his own definition of himself, his own view of himself. He was no longer a quote, as he said, homeless guy. He was a card maker and that gave him a, a re, you know, renewed sense of pride. It's amazing. Again, I'm so happy we're having this conversation because it you're able to describe so much more in depth what it is that you guys are doing and to your point it's it's so much more than just partner with the maker they come up with an idea you sell the car like it's so much deeper than that because to your point you're you're giving someone somewhat of like a purpose a a thing to do a thing to sell a thing to put their name on and i think we can all relate to that feeling right whether it's at at work or a hobby or anywhere when you produce something and you see someone enjoy it, you see it in a store, you just put it out in the world. That feeling is incredible. We all know that feeling. So yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy you're able to describe that of it's just so much more than simply selling cards and giving back to people. You give so much more than just money back, back to the makers. And that's wonderful. Thank you for going in depth, in depth to that. Sure. At a core, we don't, we all yearn to be seen, right? Right. To be appreciated, right. to be truly witnessed, not just to be valued. Yeah. To be absolutely. That's like at our core, what we 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 all want that. Mm-hmm. We want mm-hmm. it. We've wanted it from the day we were born. We've wanted that acknowledgement, that approval from our parents from early on. It's just it's in nature, right? It's it's um, part of our DNA. Mm-hmm. And when you lose that in life the ability to try to restore it is critical, I think, to the overall healing of that individual. No, I completely agree. And again, I just think that's a feeling we can all relate to, whether, you know, in a small way or in a big way, we know what what that feels like. I'm curious, and maybe you guys already do this, but have you ever considered, so I know it sounds like you share the story of the makers on the back of the cards. Have you ever considered doing a a podcast or video, like somehow recording those or even snippets of those conversations that you have with them, you know, over coffee or, or Zoom, I think you said, um, just to spread their messages further. Is that is that in the future for the company? Have you considered that? I'm just, just curious. I'm just picking your brain. Oh, I love that, Alexa. So I got to laugh though at part of what you said, because <laughs> the idea of you, you would know that a podcast is a lot of work. For sure. And so, yes. If I had a dollar for every time someone said like that I should do a podcast, I tell them like, you know, it's it's not easy. You know, you have you have to work at it. You have to mm-hmm. they go, yeah, like what like an hour, how hard is that? I'm like, oh, if that's all it was, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You've got yeah, to edit it, you've sure. got to find the right person, you have to prepare, you have to then yep. you know, manage the, the the podcast and market them and all, you know, get your platform figured out and whatever, Mm -hmm. what tools you're using to record and edit and all the whatever. But I, I love what you just tapped on there is because at our core, we're about the story and any ways we can share that story more is, is certainly of interest. We do, you know, one of the things that we've done for kind of since the beginning is 
on our Instagram, and if people want to follow us, it's just Second Story Cards, at Second Story Cards, plural. Every third post we do is a quote. Okay. Because words are really important. That's part of, you know, our, you know, DNA as a company, as a, you know, in, in the paper products space that feature words. Is the words are important. They mean something. And the words of our makers often fill up that third, every third quote. Sometimes, you know, they're quotes from famous people about, you know, mm -hmm. business or homelessness or, you know, I mean, or they could just be something funny that we, we post that day, but often they feature, you know, the words of our makers. And that's part of our mission is to elevate their voices, not only just on the cards, but, you know, placing it other places. So I love your idea. I want to, I want to, I want to stew on that. And I want to, I want to run with it <laughs> once I think of the right way to do it. So, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, because, yeah. Their oh, stories ahead, are powerful. Mm -hmm. When we talk, you know, I was telling you about part of the, the creative process where we, you know, we dive into people's innermost thoughts. And, and I always have to ask people to, you know, I say, hey, something that you really touched on during our conversation is this. And I'd like to, I'd like us to, to try to build a card around that because it's powerful. Occasionally, one of our makers will say, Reed, that's too tough for me to share. I shared it with you, but I don't want people knowing about that part of my life. Yes. Yeah. I'm not proud of that. And I, so it can be pretty difficult sometimes, but their stories are so powerful. When I asked the question, I asked it to everyone, tell me about like the holidays, you know, when you grow up, when you were growing up. And for so many of our community, the answer is nothing like the answer I would give if somebody asked me that question. Holidays for me were amazing. I got great gifts. Family came together. I mean, I was a star, right? Like, you know, all the attention is <laughs> on me and my brother as kids. And you hear people, you know, one of our makers once said, holidays were no good for me. And he said, on the good years, my dad would take me to the goodwill and I was allowed to pick out a gift. But he said it wasn't a new gift. It was somebody else's gift. It was a gift that somebody else didn't want. That's what I got. And man, I, mean, I, was, I got emotional just thinking about it. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. They get one gift. They got one gift. Yeah. And it was a gift that someone did not value enough to keep. And I just, you start to understand the life trajectory of, you know, Mm -hmm. becoming homeless is not a singular event. It's a series of events, right? And oftentimes it, it, it digs way back deep into someone's personal history. It, it's about the way they were raised. It's about, it's about the family that they grew up in or the lack of family that they grew up in. It's about the choices they made as a teenager. It's about doing the, something stupid in their adolescence that unfortunately led to them down a different path. They didn't have the role models often that I had. They didn't have parents who sacrificed everything they had for us. Some of them did, don't get me wrong. Some of them came from wonderful families too. I don't wanna, I mean, we have people from all different walks of life, but sure. I would say more often than not, our makers, our community had a much more complicated, much more challenging childhood than I, than I did. And I grew up very middle class, squarely, you know, didn't have like all like the cool brand new stuff at school. But I, you know, I was dressed appropriately every day. You know what I mean? Right. So I have to kind of keep my privilege in check, I think, too, mm -hmm. when, I, when I have these discussions. It just proves that we're all living. We're truly all living in our own worlds. And we don't understand that there are other worlds that other people are living in right next to us, unless we take the time to listen to their stories. And that's where I was going with, with that is in talking to you, it is so clear that like you said, you're, you guys are about highlighting the stories of the makers. And then the cards are simply the way for people like you and me to, to give back or support or right. That that's just the product. That's the result or outcome of the, of the business. But yeah, if there's a way to just keep telling those stories and trust me, I, I know how, how much, how hard that is to do that. A lot of work goes into that. 
But yeah, you can tell that that's, that's the heart of the business. The cards are the, the byproduct, right? It could be a card. It could be something else. You guys happened on cards, um, through the story you told, but yeah, it's about, about the stories. And, and with that is, are there ways, you know, it sounds like if you had, you know, all the resources at your hands all the time in the world, you would do a podcast or YouTube videos or something like that. But are there other goals of the business that you want to share with the audience that you're looking to achieve here soon or things they can look forward to, um, ways you want to evolve the business? For sure. From the beginning, I've always seen this business as you know, this is the first stage of it. And Mm -hmm. while we're helping people now, we're not helping them as much as we could. We don't, I don't have a social worker on staff. I'm limited in what I can do to help someone get true, hard, usable job skills. I don't have a workforce development manager. So the vision has always been, you know, where could this business grow? Right now we work, you know, we create consumer products and we sell them, but envision, you know, humor me a second and and envision a a much more scaled up company than we are, where Mm -hmm. we have a brick and mortar location that is perhaps a coffee shop that sells consumer goods. And the individuals that we work with not only help create the creative content, but are also learning valuable life skills as far as how do I, you know, how do I work in this setting? How do I gain employment experience that will get me my next job? And so, you know, I always kind of look at what's that, what is that for us? And it could be a brick and mortar. It could be a business model one that i've kind of looked at is trying to take items that for example the city of washington dc does not want so whether it be glass whether it be some type of you know just trash for for lack of another word and Mm -hmm. how do we upcycle that into something valuable it seems to be at the core of who we are this whole idea of second story and could we give the discarded products of our own community here? Could we give them a second story? Could we provide a service and a benefit to a community much greater than what we're doing now? Could we be giving job training and workforce development skills to to the women and men we work with? Could they go on and get much, much better jobs, become tax paying citizens, putting in their, giving back their fair share into our community in a much more meaningful way than what we're able to do now? And I'm proud of where we are now, but I, I feel like we're we've, we're still leaving a lot on the table, frankly. Sure. Yeah. So it sounds like expanding in the ways that you're giving back to the community and expanding those those products that we talked about, the out, the tangible outcome of what the business is producing. Yeah, that that makes sense. Well, Reed, this has been a wonderful, enlightening conversation. And, you know, my my last question is always what is your proudest accomplishment so far? And it's more just that first thing that pops into your mind so far, what do you believe is your proudest accomplishment? Well, on a personal level, I I couldn't be more proud of my partnership with my wife and the family Mm -hmm. that we've created. Probably the hardest job (laughs) (laughs) uh, I've ever had. But related Mm -hmm. to Second Story Cards, the first thing that comes to my mind when you say that is getting through the pandemic, that was such a monster. But the the proudest thing's got to be the fact that at the end of the day, we we are helping, we are helping people, and we're not only putting money in their pockets, but we're like I, we talked about earlier, we're we're rebuilding their self esteem, we're helping them go on. You know, if in ten years, you you and I meet up. And all of our people we're working with are just doing the exact same thing. They're just making cards and other things, and they haven't gone on to do anything else, to launch their own businesses, to whatever it may be. I think we'll have failed, honestly. Hmm. Even if the business hmm. is successful, I don't know if that makes sense, but we will have failed in the fact that we went, we hadn't inspired them to go further. Mm-hmm. But at this point, I'm I'm so proud of each and every one of our makers that they – you know, they, they get up every day. They do the hard work to continue to fight 
in a difficult world that, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of set against them already. And yet they wake up positive and see the, you know, they see the the glass half, you know, half full and go for mm-hmm. it, and run out and say, Hey, what can I, I'm not bound by these, this definition that someone else put on me. I can be anything I want. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Just everything that that you shared and some of the maker stories as well. And I hope everyone checks checks you out and business out and those cards out. Before we officially sign off, Reed, where can people find you? Definitely point them in the right direction so that they can support you in the business. Absolutely. So our, our main home is secondstorycards.com. We also use Instagram uh, pretty heavily, and that's at, at secondstorycards. And then when I tell people, you know, everyone has, there's a place in their community that sells cars. We may be there. If we're not there, Mm. ask. And the greatest thing you can do if, you know, people always say, how can I help? And people don't donate to us and all kinds of things. And that's lovely. We value that tremendously, but to really grow the business, the thing that people can do is when they go into their bookstore that sells cards or their, you know, gift shop, see if we're there, check our cards out. If we're not, ask them you know, do you carry second story cards? Would you consider them? Here's, you know, here's what they do. And that makes a difference because store owners, they bring in products that their customers ask for, frankly. Mm -hmm. I can call stores all day long, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but if their customers don't want what we have, they're not going to bring it. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Well, again, thank you so much for being on the podcast and sharing your story. And I hope everyone checks you out and second story cards and Again, thanks so much for being on. You're welcome back anytime um, to continue the conversation and maybe share more of the maker's stories as well. I'd love to do that. Um, But again, thank you so much, Reed. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, Alexa. I love the the platform and the voice you give small business owners and early career professionals. It's a very meaningful outlet that you're providing, and I'm honored to have been part of the show. (laughs) 